My first guest tonight received an Academy Award nomination for her performance in Almost Famous, and starting Friday, she can be seen in the brand new movie, Alex and Emma. Please welcome the lovely Kate Hudson. <laughs> Microphone on. <laughs> I love it when they put the microphone on and I have to help. All right. Uh, that's good. You okay. did it all by yourself. Oh, good going. How, How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. You I look beautiful. I've been seeing you forever. I know. I went through puberty since I we last talked. Yeah. You <laughs> Thank you. Puberty. Yes, I did. I At the age of 38, it set in. It was very late, that's but good. much needed. But thanks for being here. Yeah, I love it. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I want to ask you about something. You did what I think has got to be one of the toughest gigs in the world. You hosted the technical Oscars. Yeah, the SciTech Awards. The SciTech Awards. That, which, was, that was literally the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Because that's an audience of bitter, angry nerds. I was thinking no. about it. <laughs> they're all like, for best, you know, first of all, they know that they're not allowed to come to the big show, right? So that they're like, I mean, did no. you notice that? No, it was so, it was so great. It was, it was, everybody was so happy that they were there and right. it really was a good thing. They were out of the basement, yeah. No. <laughs> Amazing. I learned a lot. I don't remember what I learned, but, right. but at the time I was learning a lot. They were probably all telling you, I'll tell you what a lens filter adjuster does, Kate. It was, it was, you should have, you should have heard what I had to say. Oh, I really? Mean, I, I, yeah, I, you know, like the Delphi 400 uh, has helped the heliolite balloons that allow, I mean, it was one of those things. Like, and then the guy would win the award and he'd come running up there and he'd be like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be like, oh, a girl, look out, and then run away. No, come on. No, I know. It I, was I'm, a special it was night a, for them. It was a special <laughs> night for them, and they're all going to be furious at me, at me now. Look, my camera's going to go out of focus now. Because <laughs> there's a nerd. Any there's, of the special lighting there's a nerd though. in the back that's like, screw him. <laughs> Pulls a switch. All the lights go out. <laughs> well, you know, you haven't been here in a while. Uh, a lot has happened since you were here. Since you were last year, you married uh, Chris Robinson. I did. The Black Crows, I which is married. one of my favorite bands, yes, by the way. Me and, too. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, that's. Yeah. I'm curious. Were you a fan before you started dating? I was a. I was actually a huge fan before we started dating, but I didn't tell him. I didn't. I didn't let him know. You wanted to be cool about it. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I think he, he started catching on when I started going to shows and, and knowing all the song, the lyrics to the obscure songs. Right, right. He's kind of looking over going, how do you, you know, right. I was a big fan, right. huge fan. So that's, so that's kind of weird because if he had known that you were that big a fan, it might have I don't affected know. things a little bit. If he knew you were too big a fan, I'd sometimes that scares cool. people. Yeah, it could have scared him. It right. could have scared him. When, when we were shooting Almost Famous, um, it was Amorica and Three Snakes that were in my car at all times. Right, like really right. Really, the, the records I listened to when I was making that movie. So it was strange that I ended up falling in love with the guy who was writing those songs. You know? Right, right. Well, in a way, it makes sense because that music affected you. So Absolutely. this is the person who's writing this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, I, I also heard that you guys share clothes. Is that true? <laughs> and I, I don't imagine him wearing that as well. <laughs> <laughs> as you. Look, you can see my it. chest. That's all right, dude. That's... <laughs> no, well, I mean, he used to weigh about 85 pounds. Yeah, skinny guy. <laughs> skinny guy. And um, so I wear his old clothes. Like, all of a sudden, out of, you know, his, you know, a trunk will come these pants, these little jeans with, like, pot leaves all over them. <laughs> from how long ago is that? Yeah. No, from, like, 92, you know. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'll just slip them on and... Right, and it's is, it still, is it still in fashion, some of the clothes you're putting on? Is it, it's still... I think pot leaves are very in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I should... This I is disagree. <laughs> I think children should drink milk and go right to bed. Um, uh, now, I also heard, I don't know if this is true, that you make your own jewelry. Is that true? Yeah. And that you do it partially I'm, because sometimes you're put off by how expensive things are. The markup on jewelry is 80% and it drives me crazy. That's refreshing to hear a celebrity say that. You it know? makes me mad because I know I know what it costs to actually make. So what make, might make like, you know, cost like $10 to make, well, they'll charge $150 for. Right. And that makes me mad. So I just decided, oh, I'll make my own jewelry. Now, do you, if you see something you like in a store, let's say you see a necklace that you really like, 
Do you then try and go make that necklace? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? So what do you yeah. do? I mean, they must get suspicious at the store when you come by and say, yeah, I really like it, but I'm not sure I want to buy it. Can I sketch it and take I photos, <laughs> please? And a clay mold of it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know when the last time I actually bought jewelry was, so I think people maybe get a little susp Now they're, now everybody knows. I hear those Rolex watches you sell in Times Square are amazing. <laughs> I've seen you out there with half a suitcase sometimes. Yeah, well. I'm like, do you need to be doing this? Come on, the markup's ridiculous. I just threw some gears in there. It's almost as good. Um, let's talk about Alex and Emma. Okay. It, this is this is because there's a strange phenomenon here. In this movie, you're co-starring with Luke Wilson. Yeah, that's a really strange phenomenon. Well, because he's a good friend of yours. You he guys is are a good buddies. Friend. Yeah, we're good buddies. So it was uh, like brother sister buddies. Right, but you have to be romantic yeah. in these situations. There's a lot of laughing going on as we were kissing. Really? It was really uncomfortable. But we made it happen, you know. It it happened. I bet it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, because I would think you have to get through that barrier. This is my friend, and we like I've I've like no, given this guy a wedgie, and now we have to. Yeah, the first time. Because that's what friends do. Yeah. And <laughs> oh, every night. Yeah, at the Tech Awards they do. <laughs> gotcha. I, why do I keep doing that? Don't be mad at me. They won't be mad at you. Trust me. Uh, but uh, but but no, you got through that barrier. The, yeah. Well, the first time we had to kiss, I, I it was actually. Um, uh, he came in for the kiss, you know. He's, you know, it was, it was, it was like all in slow motion for me. I was looking at him like, oh my god, I'm actually kissing Luke. Right. And um, and then once his lips hit, I was gone. I just started to laugh. And I, do you know what that does slightly, to a yeah. guy? Because <laughs> I know what that does to a guy. You just described college and like eight years after that. Hey, your head's funny. <laughs> what? Yeah, but it's Luke. He knows. Yeah. You know, okay. I mean, he's fine. He can handle it. He can right. handle he's secure. It. When you're insecure, it's terrible, let me tell you. All right, I'm going to get out of my own head for a second. Um, we have a clip here from the movie. Uh, what do we need to do to, to, to understand I this? I think clip? it's just sort of setting up our relationship and that I'm. I'm kind of a little bit of a pain in the ass. I'm sort of the practical woman who's constantly questioning his writing. Right. And so. And you're his assistant. And you're I'm assisting. His stenographer. Him, right, helping him yes. write this book. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at this clip from Alex and Emma. St. Charles seemed almost unreal, like a magical playground for the well-to-do. There was, however, something besides the affluence and beauty of St. Charles which filled Adam's brain until he could barely breathe. It was Paulina's perfume and the application thereof upon her ample bosom. Oh, please. What? Ample bosom? What's wrong with that? It's literary. Oh, well... In that case, you forgot the heaving. The what? In every book I've ever read, whenever there's an ample bosom, there's always heaving. Do we have to talk about this right now? You're the one who introduced the bosoms. I'm simply asking if you'd like them to heave. Fine, let them heave. It's true, heaving ample bosoms. Heaving ample bosoms. <laughs> My favorite quotes from literature all involved. <laughs> Heaving bosoms. Uh, well, yeah, for many things. Alex and Emma uh, opens on Friday. Delightful uh, to see you again. Thanks so much nice for coming to see by. You too. Thank yeah, you. give my best to Chris. All right, everybody. Kate Hudson, Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming up. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, fine show tonight. Fine show coming up tomorrow night from Sex and the City. Kim Cattrall is going to be here. <laughs> the mic never works. Uh, from the Hulk, Eric Bana going to be here. That's very cool. And listen to this. Please, no, not too much clapping. So little show. Uh, he's going to snowboard down Mount Everest, this guy. Extreme snowboarder Stephen Koch. He's going to be on the show. Now, I want to talk to that guy. Because he may not be long for this world.